All right, what is up everybody? We are here at the car wash because I had the nutso idea that I want to see how my tent does in extreme conditions. And this is the best way that I could think of to manufacture just an absolutely crushing rainstorm. So stay tuned. We're going to see how the Peregrine Kestrel tent does in extreme circumstances. What is up guys? We're here today to talk about the Peregrine Kestrel three-man ultralight backpacking tent. Um, this is a tent that I've had for a little bit. I've been able to use it a couple times um, just on short little overnight hikes and that kind of thing. And I just, I've had enough time to put my thoughts together about it and kind of open it up and talk about it. So we're going to jump in and kind of decipher the product description for you a little bit and tell you my experience with it and what I like about it. We had a really good time experimenting with it because as I was getting ready for this video, I noticed that in the product description, it says that this tent was tested in DACs. I don't know who DAC is, but they have a specialized wind lab that uh, Peregrine took the Kestrel to to test the poles. And they tested this tent and designed it so that it could withstand winds of up to 45 miles an hour. And then the other thing that stood out to me in the product description was um, they claim to be they claim to have some of the best water protection in the industry. And so I thought that the best way to test that out would be to manufacture our own storm. And so we did that by taking the tent to the car wash and spraying it down with some high pressure hoses, seeing if the ripstop nylon rain fly would stand up to the high pressure water and seeing if we could have a guy inside the tent and see if he stayed dry in just really a torrent. So let's dive in. Let's look at the product description here. Um, it's a lightweight backpacking tent that can fit three people in it supposedly, and I believe it. Um, the dimensions on the thing is 86 inches long, which is a little over seven feet. By uh, It's kind of a trapezoidal shape, so at its widest point it's 67 inches, which is just over five feet. And then at its narrowest point it's 57 inches, so like just shy of five feet. Um, and then it's 46 inches high, which is just short of 48 inches. Um, but that actually, that inside space brings me to probably one of my favorite parts about this tent. Uh, most tents that I would stay in growing up would have kind of a cross pole design where you're going, you're taking the pole from one corner to the other and it makes this big rectangular square kind of a shape. But the problem with that is that the tent walls are sloped in and it really makes it hard for a tall person like me to have all the headspace that I want. This, the Kestrel, um, the tent poles go in this weird, like, like it's not an X shape. They come from down two points together and then there's a long straight period and then they fork back out. But across the skinny middle section, they have a crossbar that'll go out and just creates a much more vertical sidewall, which increases dramatically the volume inside of the tent. Um, there's just a lot more head space and um, it feels much more spacious than, than it should because it's not a really, really big tent and it's crazy, crazy light. It's three pounds, 12 ounces. This three-man tent is a lot lighter than some one-man tents that I've seen out on the market, which is just, just freaking cool. If you're trying to, if you're trying to build an ultralight setup, where you're spending multiple days in the backcountry and you're trying to minimize weight as much as you can, this is a really, really strong contender for a good tent that you should have. Um, the materials that they're making this thing out of, we've got. Uh, Let's see, we've got some 30D ripstop nylon for the floor, and then 15D ripstop nylon for the fly. 
um, a 40D polyester mesh for everything that's not the fly. Um, the D is an industry measurement for materials, for fabrics. Um, and then the number before that just has to do with the thickness of it. Um, and so, like, for example, the floor of the tent is 30D. The fly of the tent is 15D. So the 15 is a smaller number. The fly is a little bit, is half as thin as the floor. That makes sense. You want your floor to be thicker because that's what's going to be rubbing against the ground and is more likely to wear out than the fly. Um, Moving on from moving on from that, um, we the description spends some time talking about the bright color of the tent, and this is probably something that I really like in a tent, um, just because I'm when I go out backpacking, I'm usually trying to take pictures or make videos, and so a really bright tent is really fun to take home and show pictures to mom of and. Um, it's like, oh, look how cute. It's such a pretty tent. And just So it's, I really, really like the color of it personally. Um, color is definitely a personal preference, and it might not be the first thing that you're looking for in a tent. Um, the Kestrel does only come in the one color, but frankly, it does a good job. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Christian Silva. He's going to be our field reporter. That's me. Taking us live to the action from inside the tent. 360 all the way around. Don't worry. Whatever it is, I'll get it. And over here we have the good looking Jake who is going to be running the simulation for us by operating the hose and water pressure. It's his job to make this as realistic as possible as though it was a big rainstorm with a lot of wind. All right. Good luck, soldier. Obviously, we're not staking the tent down because there's no dirt to poke stakes into, but uh, I think we're ready to go. Christian, you ready? Ready. Jake, you ready? I'm ready. All right, we're gonna go. Here we go. Where is it? High pressure rinse. Full pressure in three, two. What? So yeah, just a couple of thoughts about, you know, running it through the car wash. Um, not entirely sure why we decided to put it in the back of the truck, but it was fun where it was. Um, it allowed Jake to get up on top and really get the hose nice and close and try and simulate like direct rainfall and direct wind. Um, obviously we could have gotten Christian way more wet if we had had the hose below the tent and sprayed up underneath the fly, but I mean, that wasn't the goal. We wanted to try and make it at least somewhat realistic. Um, it's probably like, you can argue with me. You can say that, oh no, that's not realistic at all. Or why'd you do that? That was stupid. And it was like, frankly, it was just fun. It was just really fun for us to get out and do something kind of wacky. Um, decided not to run soap on the tent because I didn't want to damage um, the uh, the silicone coating that's on the rain fly. Um, that just seemed a little unnecessary. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Christian. I'm reporting from the live but inside of what appears to be a wind tunnel. Just kidding, we're inside a car wash. Uh, we are hosing this down to test the strength that it, it, it says on the tag. Basically, it says that it can withstand a wind tunnel and rain at the same time. Now, I haven't gotten wet yet. They're outside of me right now, spraying down at a car wash. I'm inside. I'm in the back of, a, of the bed of a truck. I'm only getting a little bit of a breeze coming out from inside here. As you can see, a little bit of moisture here from over here from my, uh, my north and a little bit to my south as well. If we had been able to stake it down, I think that it could have done an even better job keeping the water out, especially on probably where the vestibule sticks out on the front as it as the fly opens and then on the two sides I think are probably the main points where water started to get in and then I think the other reason water was getting in was um, contact between the mesh and the fly um, when those materials kind of touch each other or when they're they were up against the side of the truck that contact allows water to get through a little bit better 
And so setting it up in the wild where you've got uh, those, you've got those different strings that you can extend out and really stretch out the fly and keep it away from the mesh a little bit better. Um, I think we could have kept some more water out that way. I definitely saw some coming through um, when we were doing this little experiment. But I mean, all in all, I love this tent. Like I'm gonna keep it around for as long as I can and try to take as good a care of it. Come on out. I got 5% left. Jake, let him out. Okay. Can you turn that Well? How'd it go? It did pretty well. We got a little moisture on the sides, but that's just because the sides weren't staked down all the way. If we had the stakes on the sides of either either side of me here, it would have been nice and dry in here. But other than that, I mean, held up. No leaks from the top yet. I haven't felt anything from the surface. The, ne the mesh netting held up perfectly. So if you guys are looking to do a nice lightweight like trekking tent that can fit multiple people, this ain't too bad. Frick yeah, dude. I'm impressed, honestly. I imagined the worst. I imagined that the hose would rip a hole in the fly. Um, I imagined that a lot of water would get up underneath, especially because we weren't staking it down. But here we are. We did it. Christian came out dry. And honestly, really, really impressed with how this tent held up. Good job, Peregrine. The Peregrine Kestrel, available at peregrineequipment.com and select retailers near you.